So I don't, I don't have a PowerPoint. Sorry. So my my uh, paper is entitled Eyes Wide Shut: The Last Cult Film of the 20th Century. Uh, Eyes Wide Shut was in post production when Stanley Kubrick died, giving it the distinction of being the director's final film. Uh, the surrounding sense of finality is also consolidated by the fact that it was released uh, several months before the end of the century, uh, end of 1999. As has been noted by critics, uh, the film's status, uh, or some critics and scholars, the film's status and identity must be approached, however, with some trepidation. As we've already heard today, uh, Kubrick was not there to oversee the final stages of post-production. There are many conflicting opinions of collaborators and critics as to whether the film by Warner Brothers was the film that Kubrick had intended uh, to, uh, uh, well, sorry, the, the, uh, the film that Kubrick had intended uh, also contributes to the surrounding, surrounding enigma of the film and its emergence as a late 20th century cult text. In our previous paper, uh, Eddie, uh, presented very articulately the uh, Eyes Wide Shut in the context of the 1990s blockbuster. In this paper, I hope to present the case for Eyes Wide, Sh Eyes Wide Shut to be read not only as a cult film, but as maybe as one of the last cult films of the 20th century, at least in the sense that the transition into the... Oh, I'm bathed in darkness here. Um, uh, and, uh, is, is that someone who's turning out the lights? Uh, 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 at least to do it to Ken Dog. Uh, at least in the sense that the transition into the 20, 21st century brought with it a re-understanding of how the term cult and the cult text is constructed. So what I deem to be a shift from texts which organically develop as a cult for a variety of reasons independent to each film, and as texts which are constructed by a deliberate matrix of irony, aesthetic, self-reflexivity, homage, intertextuality, and nostalgia, in order to kind of replicate the conditions of, kind of you know, previous cult cinema, uh, exploitation cinema, etc. Uh, so notable contemporary examples of this form um, might be you know, some more contemporary directors like uh, Refn, Strickland, Amabilla. Uh, in this sense, I also position Richard Kelly's genre-bending time travel sci-fi horror, Donnie Darko, as the first cult film of the 20th century, or at least, uh, the first one to exist at the crux of cult and mainstream. And what I'm going to do is sort of argue that, that Eyes Wide Shut and, uh, and this film offer kind of, uh, almost a kind of chapter break in how we understand the term cult. Uh, everyone with me so far? Everyone okay? Uh, this is, of course, a radically different film to Eyes Wide Shut, but one which form also forms this sort of cult chapter break there. <coughs> uh, with Kubrick's movie around the turn of the millennium. In order to assess Eyes Wide Shut's cult position, however, this hope of paper hopes to consider its para paracinematic status at the end of the century. How it may be read against changing critical understandings of the term cult in the last decade of the millennium, and really how Kubrick intended for it, for it to be understood and consumed. Uh, so I'm going to move into the next section now, which is entitled Critical Approaches to Eyes Wide Shut as a cult text, and I want to sort of understand, try and understand uh, how Eyes Wide Shut has been read as a sort of cult film and, and, and what we can learn from this. Uh, at this point, I would like to explore Eyes Wide Shut's cult identity through an examination of a number of critical approaches. 21st century criticism has seen a reassessment of Eyes Wide Shut in cult terms, certainly as part of a renewed, wider critical interest in Kubrick as a cult director and one whose work engages a level of fan engagement, situating this enigmatic and frequently puzzling film in situ alongside The Shining, a film which, as Ian Roscoe reminds us, Kubrick admitted he designed as a puzzle. In his article, Let This Be Kubrick's Final Word, Do You Hear Us, Warner Brothers? 
uh, band reception to the death of Stanley Kubrick in his final film, Eyes Wide Shut. James Fenwick notes that in, in fact, the study of Kubrick as a cult director, certainly in 2018 in his writing, has been, re was, has been a sort of relatively unmined field of inquiry, with only two scholars making heady inroads into it, that's David Church and Kate Egan, whose only interlinked inquiries are based around A, a myth mythic cult personality built around Kubrick the auteur, and cult fandom emerging out of Kubrick's mystery, and his kind of mythology, his withdrawal from public life, which was exacerbated by his death shortly afterwards. Uh, sorry, his withdrawal from public life, and which was exacerbated by his death shortly, after, shortly afterwards. The fandom, that is, not his withdrawal from public life, which also admittedly was exacerbated by his death. <laughs> um, <laughs> Fenwick's study, Fenwick's study focuses on the reaction to Kubrick's death on the alt.movies Kubrick, alt.movies.kubrick web forum, and builds on, as he says, the notion of post-object fandom, whereby fans transition from active to dormant fandom upon cessation of their uh, central fan object. Post-object fandom has been applied to televisions, television series and films. Kubrick was such a dominant figure, a brand, and perhaps the ultimate director, in defining the idea of the auteur, that he eclipsed even his own filmic texts. He owned the text due to the weight his name carried and was the central object for Kubrick fans. The transition to post-object fandom for Kubrick fans was complicated by the director's death occurring prior to the release, and maybe even according to some, the completion of Eyes Wide Shut. So in considering Eyes Wide Shut as a cult text, we might also look to Nathan Abrams' recent analysis in his book, Stanley Kubrick, New York Jewish Intellectual in which the author proposes that Eyes Wide Shut is a power pest of Kubrick's Vertikom's previous works, whose traces are visible in his films. A self-aware and self-referential text which encourages, encourages fans of the director to eke out these references in an attempt, in, in an attempt to solve the film's narrative puzzles. Furthermore, in uh, Cult Film as a Guide to Life, Ian Hunter devotes a chapter, Wasting Time in the Stanley Hotel, over to analysis of Kubrick's films as cult properties, juxtaposing the renewed critical evaluation of fan-led textual interpretation, uh, devoting, uh, sorry, juxtaposing renewed critical evaluation with fan-led textual interpretation, devoting much of his analysis to the documentary room film, to Room 237, which has kind of really been the, the beacon, if you like, of, of 21st century fandom, uh, whatever you think, maybe it's, it's there, isn't it? Uh, fandom and the prevalence of fan-led conspiracy theories in The Shining, said uh, uh, so the despite its flaws, room, many obvious flaws, Room 237 has become a central beacon in 21st century Kubrick fandom, or so, so kind of key example of it, I should say. Uh, he offers a comparative analysis of Eyes Wide Shut, claiming, although Eyes Wide Shut has attracted much conventional peer-reviewed analysis, analysis, it too has fallen prey to immersive criticism that verges on cinephile paranoia. Or more accurately, it has been inserted into existing conspiracy theories in which the analysts are true cultists, especially theories fixated with the secret elite group, the Illuminati, in that confused, often anti-Semitic zone where the far right and far left meet in sort of places. This reading of Eyes Wide Shut as a cult, check, cult text is prison, sorry, is filtered through the prism of conspiracy-led fandom and textual overreading and interpretation. So this has dogged Kubrick's work since at least, two, since, uh, at least 2001, since 2001, The Space Odyssey, uh, and the flogged to death fake moon landing story. Um, such fandom, one might argue, has less to do with fandom of Kubrick, and more to do with a kind of paranoid obsession or fandom of conspiracy theories in and of themselves. Nevertheless, such readings do confer upon Eyes Wide Shut a sense of millennial and post-millennial anxiety. <coughs> its focus on secret elite cabals of power will be refocused in the wake of 9-11, adding to the film's cult reputation in this way. The website, the fan website Chartworld, or the conspiracy fan website Chartworld, for instance, spuriously incorporates Eyes Wide Shut into a far-fetched argument that Kubrick's obsession with recurring images of monoliths, twins, and pillars across his work foreshadowed and foresaw the terrorist attack on the Twin Towers, <laughs> and also brings, you know, questions the nature of his death shortly after the production of the film's land. Um, 
Interestingly, Hunter allies eyes wide shut with conspiratorial horror movies such as Rosemary's Baby and the broader conspiracy thriller genre of the 1970s. Uh, the film's representation of the relationship between power and <coughs> sexuality argues presents a fantasy. Uh, images of sexual decadence themselves are expressions of a widespread fantasy relationship with power, as in society, the film Society, 1989, The Ninth Gate, Roman Hostel, and even The Fifty Shades of Grey in which the ultra-rich are not only supremely powerful, but more excitingly sexually depraved. These conspiratorial references have energised cult interpretation of the wild kind. Uh, you know, we might even add to this roster of intertextuality. Roger Coleman's lurid, semi-exploitation art cult film, The Mask of the Red Death, a film noted for its striking use of colour coding, a sinister gathering of a masked elite and a figure in a red cloak. Uh, certainly, this has been noted by Abrams and Coker in their recent book on Eyes Wide Shut, uh, where the resonance and incorporation of Kubrick, uh, so where they note the resonance and incorporation of Corman's film, drawing comparison not only with the film's orgy sequence, but also both Corman and Kubrick's attack into dreamlike surrealism and the intertextual references of artists like Bosch, De Kiriko, and Red and Green. Okay, so, uh, part three, how am I doing? Uh, if Eyes Wide Shut's cult identity and fandom is brackets, at least part, close brackets, founded on the persistence of conspiracy based textual fan interpretation, is not the only thing that it hinges on. The film's supposed incompletion and supposed interference from Warner Brothers are also contributing elements, a formative of forming part of the surrounding myth. Uh, not just of the film, but of uh, Kubrick too. And this is something that James Fenwick notes. He says, uh, alt.movie.kubrick users began to interact with each other on this issue and to protest the film's distributor, Warner Brothers, who they believed in tampering with Kubrick's final vision. Such a reaction can be seen as a way of negotiating the transition to post object phantom, linked with the loss of control that some fans may have felt due to the absence of Kubrick's authority and control over the film's release. A number of ANK fans were, were confused as to why the film did not meet their expectations, while others constructed a halo effect around Kubrick, building on the cult of personality and refusing to see him as anything other than a genius and all of his films as masterpieces. Okay. Um, but how do we align Eyes Wide Shut with critical discourses and paradigms of cult cinema at the, at the shift, in the shifting position at the turn of the millennium? This is maybe a more complicated task than we, than we first think. Certainly, the 2008 Cult Film Symposium published in Cineast offers a number of conflicting critical responses to the question, what is a cult film? I'd like to say one paradigm of this and suggest that eyes, what I want to think about is the, the point at which Eyes Wide Shut exists at that kind of meeting of cult and mainstream. Uh, which I argue is a sort of a, a sort of key sort of trend in the 1990s, particularly the late 1990s, uh, particularly with, as, as Eddie points out, the sort of movement in independent American cinema, mainstream American cinema films like Fight Club, which exists certainly within a kind of mainstream kind of framework, but also within a sort of cult framework as well. Uh, <clears throat> So I'd like to take one paradigm of cult and suggest that Eyes Wide Shut follows a trend of transgressive mainstream cinema in the 1990s, around which cult attention has developed organically, as well as those cited previously. So it's attracting to conspiracy theories, reaction to potential incomplete with completeness, etc. We may also refer to the film's negative critical response and relative failure at the box office which brings it into a line with Hunter's, Hunter's definition as cult, of cult as you know, being disasters on first release, although whether it's a disaster is not um, The film, Furthermore, the film reflects a sense of dreamlike lostness and anxiety at the turn of the millennium, embodied somewhat by Dr. Bill's psychogeographic wanderings in the film. Uh, the sense of lostness is reflected in what Scott Tobias in his essay, The New Cult Film Canon, observes as the film's own out of places. He writes, Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut is a movie out of time, or to put it another way, it's timeless. 
It was released in the middle of 1999's solo movie season, preceded by Wild Wild West and American Pie, and followed the next week by the abysmal remake of The Haunting. In, in retrospect, it seems that Kubrick's absurd, uh, uh, it seems absurd <laughs> that Kubrick's enigmatic final film could be part of a blockbuster season. Uh, so come in here with Eddie's chat there. Uh, even though it starred Cruz and Kidman, who at the time were Hollywood's biggest power couple. But it's a good example of what, ha of what happens when films of genuine ambition and artistry are caught up in the swells of studio mass marketing and hype. So I my short piss with a paradigm of auteurist mainstream films which have found second life as kind of cult objects. So there are kind of examples from that kind of mid to late 1990s period. Uh, Showgirls, for instance, a, a staple of late 20th century court criticism, or even David Finch's exploration of a kind of masculinity in crisis. Uh, Fight Club was released several months after Eyes Wide Shut in, in November of 1999. Uh, David Church notes that the term cult seems to have become more culturally diffuse over the past two decades earning not only a place as a popular marketing term, but also blurring with mainstream entertainment, uh, as with cult blockbusters, Lord of the Rings, and the Star Wars series, which we'll come back to shortly. If Eyes Wide Shut exists at the tail end of the millennium, then it's interesting to know how cult manifested itself in the wake of the millennium. So you have Eyes Wide Shut sort of coming towards the end of 1999, and then, I mean, as the purposes of my argument are, and something I find quite interesting, you have something like Johnny Darko, released shortly after, in 2001, so not too long after uh, the turn of the year, or so after the turn of the millennium, which may possibly lay claim to be the first cult film of the 21st century. Again, it's a markedly, markedly different film to Eyes Wide Shut. I'm certainly not trying to argue that these films are any way comparable in terms of narrative or style. But if Eyes Wide Shut comes at the end of a period for films which have organically or, or sort of developed themselves as, you know, as cult text, then Donnie Darko begins a new postmodern paradigm of nostalgic, ironic, deliberately cultish mainstream cult films. And the next decade would see this trend continue with cult blockbusters, such as the Star Wars prequel, which are, Star Wars prequel trilogy, which had actually begun in 1999, and Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings film. So, uh, Films which are deliberately kind of designed and sort of aimed at sort of cult fans, so to speak. And one of the things I think is quite interesting is how did Kubrick intend Eyes Wide Shut to be uh, to be consumed? Was it as a cult text? Did he think, well, I'm going to make this, you know, this is going to be a, a cult? And certainly, sort of the, the the notion of the puzzle comes into play. We can refer back to The Shining, uh, but I don't think he did really kind of uh, intended to be a cult film. Um, I think he just intended it to be a sort of, a more, just an enigmatic film. <laughs> um, one key parallel between these two films is in the way fans made early use of kind of internet platforms in order to offer textual interpretation and conspiratorial theories. Um, okay, I'm just, I'm just yeah. Sorry, I couldn't see me. Uh, furthermore, in his essay, Gone Girl and Eyes Wide Shut, a study of psycho, psycho, psychopathy in the heteronormative patriarchal occult, Johnny Darko director Richard Kelly responds to both Kubrick's death and the esoteric and cult appeal of, uh, of, of Eyes Wide Shut, uh, whilst also locating the direct, locating Kubrick in a matrix of influence with Fight Club director David Fincher. So it's interesting to see that, that he is kind of placed within this kind of, of for want of a better word, cabal of late 90s independent directors who have a sort of cult, uh, cult appeal. As well as noting the conspiracy, film's conspiracy obsessed fandom, he draws comparison between the representation of marriage and the inference and representation of blood sac sacrifice and things as Gone Girl. Uh, saying, but Gone Girl and Eyes Wide Shut are deeply twisted, satirical, borderline, maniacal, erotic thrillers uh, that are well aware that the institute, uh, well aware, sorry, that, that, that seem to be made by a snickering auteur. 
Well aware that the institution of marriage is itself being bathed in a hot dose of Tyler Durden's corrosive lyso lyso from Fight Club. Uh, so in making such a statement, Kelly is noting Eyes Wide Shut's position within a kind of milieu of contemporary cult mainstream text and positioning Kubrick himself within this sphere. So this is, this, this is me finishing up now. There's been little time in this paper to present an in-depth textual reading of Eyes Wide Shut as a cult film, hopefully that will come later. But my aim here has been to offer a broad discussion of how the film emerged as a cult text and how its position at the end of the century stands as a chapter break uh, in how the term cult is understood. I've tried to present how Kubrick's final film stands in contrast to the nostalgic, self-consciously retro homaging cult films which have come to dominate the first in the 20th and 21st century, um, as well as how it fits in with the paradigm of mainstream cult films in the 